Good afternoon again. Good afternoon. So, you are stretching, yes? This yes. is good, this is good. You know, if the body is too sedentary, or if someone has been ill and they can't move around, what happens? Everything contracts, yes? And then you have to do some sort of physical therapy, exercise, stretching to get fluid. And if you recall, our vehicle was, pardon us, demonstrating to you uh, in this morning and afternoon ways in which you can become fluid with the body. You were practicing earlier with moving your hands in some various uh, Qigong exercises. And if you look at what you were doing, it was about being fluid, yet still maintaining your structure wanting to be fluid when you can but not being some loose fluid all the time take that and cut and paste it onto the lines of time in order to understand multidimensionality and the significance of simultaneous events especially events that are primary or that happen at a primary location. Uh, these are coalescings of reality, each one affecting the other, each one in out picturing. As we mentioned before your lunchtime, we were using the example of Egypt. Because it is familiar to you, you have all been there or lived there on the lines of time, and it is big in the news today and it is not going away. How could something happening at the pyramids really go away? It may seep underground and crawl under the Red Sea and erupt someplace else, but this is uh, some pretty potent energies that are being coalesced together from, as we said, many different spokes of reality. No one person, government, or, or organization is running the show. In today's world, there is no Pharaoh. Do you follow? But you remember the exercise that we took you upon, yes? Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's job was to fertilize the mind. And so on some level, you are in Egypt still. And if you can picture something occurring through an energy exercise and imagining, then if it is true energy, and it is energy with good intention, then it sends out its reverberations. You are really now in the opening salvos, in the beginning tsunamis and sparks of revolution in the mind. And it will offer you and your progeny, and your lines of time, a victory in certain regards in terms of achieving a state of mind. You can imagine that you have had ancestors, perhaps, or current family members, and they plod along doing the same old thing, doing the same old thing. And if something comes along to disrupt them, sometimes they deal with it well and may go back to do the same old thing. Sometimes the pace of civilization moves in that fashion. We would call it the plotters, the movers. Sometimes, once in a while, things speed up to such an extraordinary level, like reaching intense high temperatures of Celsius or Fahrenheit. And things cannot sustain themselves so long in that highly burning capacity. So everything quickens and fires up. And that too is an analogy for this ending point of the Mayan calendar. And back to what Joy brought up earlier today, that that point is designated as an end, not the end of the world. And yet, everyone will project onto it the deepest stories of their own psyche that were affiliated with endings. 
because you see not only do you remember finishing one of your grade school days and racing outside to know you could go to the pond or strap on your skates or wherever you were going there are so many endings of cycles that are also cosmically aligned during these years can you pinpoint a date and a time hardly because time is your own invention time is your hammock your container the place from which you view reality it is not reality just as the hammock is not reality all by itself but it allows you to experience a creation that was made in reality and that brings you a perspective humanity's cradle or hammock is being so discombobulated and rocked now rocked into the awakening of all these convergence of events the other evening our vehicle mentioned to you those of you who were here that recently scientifics are bold enough to get out and make pronouncements to say that the latest discoveries are that you live in a multiverse a hidden and magnificent multifaceted complexities of reality this is good news would you agree yes this is in fact stunning pronouncements this is more than quantum theory this is recognition of let's say compiling this and compiling this and coming to the conclusion that nothing that the logical mind thought was actually is this multiverse is about all parallel and probable worlds happening at once happening so quickly and so fast they are based on decision and with conscious awareness and precision these probabilities can be surfed jumped and uh, explored and will remind you of this the naming by science of the recognition of the multiverse is not new in and of itself because you are multidimensional all the time to one degree or another just because modern humanity has lost its ability to willingly surf the timelines or to pick up multidimensional information does not remove the essence of your multidimensionality you are multidimensional by intuition by complete naturalness the transport or the mode of transport or the the foods the tasks the interests in one life can literally be occurring in another setting at the same moment in your terms of development yet each one can be so immersed in their own slice of the visible spectrum and experience of reality that they are inured of the other let's say uh, influences yet those influences reign today the energies are catapulting the human mind and the human mind and the human spirit has agreed to set up and participate in a grand drama to break out of the trance of linear time fear and all sorts of limitations this agreement happens on a soul level and it is occurring on the version of earth that you are incarnated upon in this parent slice of time that you call the 21st century so it's not unnatural what is occurring you are seeing a natural unfoldment and we want to encourage it along within you all right so let's engage in some questions please who has something they want to ponder or comment upon or share what did you think of the game that you played 
the timeline ticket game. Well, this is George. This is George. Mm -hmm. Rescue them. Um, one of the things that, in, the, in playing the game, one of the things that you, uh, or that came up for us to write was something Forewarning. Warning, a full, it could be a forewarning, but it was like a lesson too. Remember this lesson, and you know, do this. Yes. Do this thing, and with the implication of or else. Exactly, and the implication I could share, or but now but was that give me the roses. What give and share the roses while you live. The roses being love, love while you're alive, give while you're alive, share while you're alive, because life is sweet and short. So that was always said in my family. My grandparents said it, my mother said it, and it got me to thinking about the onion and how, you know, that was one part of the conscious mind, that the conscious mind, the P, would stop and really listen when the parents, the grandparents, or relatives would tell stories and say their truisms, it would always go back to, you know, stories. Now, we still tell stories, but it seemed to be that my family generationally was always going, and then oral traditions in different countries and all around the world, that onion was stimulated a lot. Yes, and we would say that it was in all sorts of, of families, extended families, and uh, groups that uh, for a while now are gathered in their own, let's say, um, ethnic familiarity. And remember, looking at time, not only do you see these eras pass by along this chart, but also in time there are generations. So if four generations in your terms are living at once, and let's use 25 years generously for a generation, or is 20 better? 20, all right. Let's use about 20 years, that's almost the first Saturn square the second uh, 20 years you can see that if you look at four generations or live to see five and you are alive for five and you remember four more you can begin to notice a pattern especially as things speed up and go faster and faster and not are in the plodding keeping it the same etc that each generation has some great manifestation that they want to be noted for and be a part of, all right? Mm -hmm. Some, you had a few generations that were world war generations, yes? Mm -hmm. Major wars. Uh, you had generations, uh, each in the last century, 20th century, that brought in their own type of entertainment and music. Think of the varieties from 1900 to now 2011. Each generation expressing itself. Each generation throwing one thing by the wayside and expounding the other. Each generation explores and expresses as a collective what it is all about. But today every person that is alive on the planet has planted themselves within their own generation to be whatever age they are to participate in these most super transformative times and each person by their own position and by their own character of choice will receive to themselves very quickly all that they have put out and if folly and greed and over focus on material things have been let's say the primary investment of an individual well you can see what the nanosecond has wrought. This year itself will bring you millions, millions more foreclosures. And millions more are dropping out of the workforce. And there will be so much loss in providing of funds for people, promised entitlements. All of that is over. This is, makes Bernie Madoff look like an ant in the rainforest. Do you understand? how big this mismanagement or misunderstanding of what wealth and abundance is. You cannot point the finger at any one person. There's no wizard at the top of the mountain counting stacks of gold coins. 
and wearing rubies on all his fingers. You follow? This is a mass agreement and a co-creation. We do want to remind you that one of the opportunities, and there are many within the nanosecond, is that conundrums seem to rise very quickly and twist and turn because this is a time of karmic return. This is a time when, as we said earlier, events along the timeline, some that are supplying support, ability, strength, uh, comes out of nowhere, and others are requiring deeper lessons. Lessons that have to do with soul spirit. Because it is your soul that moves forward. Yet it is your body that must act as the shock absorber to your own decisions. So it may look as if these things happen in your body and in your physical reality. But it is always the soul behind it. What's the, how can the soul feel at rest in the body? How is a question for all of you to ask yourself as a creator and a co-creator, self, what would it take to have me settled and serene and happy as can be, healthy and vital and energy moving through me? What would it take to give you that vitality? What burdens and ideas do you have to lift off of yourself? Sometimes when the house is being foreclosed upon, the job is lost, uh, automobiles are disappearing, or whatever the story is, that's the outside world. But many people have found that uh, there is a humbling to the mismanagement of energy. And yet if one recognizes there's a lesson in this and says, I will never do this again, I, I, I got my lesson, I spent more, I wasn't aware, I frivolous, I gambled, whatever. It's that recognition of how you used energy that didn't really work out in your favor. Some people can be extremely abusive with energy and still convince themselves that things are working out in their favor such as a dictator or a, a, some tyrant, a behind the scenes person that's living in great luxury and wealth and, and so what if a whole bunch of people's lives are being disturbed as long as his life is fine, the cars are in the garage, the helicopters out back, etc. Do not delude yourself to think that this kind of thing, these people are immune. The energies will so intensify that there's only one way through it, and that is to be aware of what you're putting out and what your values are. Reality is like a supercharged magnet now, and the fillings and fibers are, are shuffling around to cluster with something that resonates with them. The theme of the day is to resonate with your own freedom, to free yourself from your own tyrannies of the mind, to unburden yourself, yet to be practical, and to use the energy that is being now open to you, this high opportunity of innovation, creativity, in the midst of many things crumbling and being destroyed. Who has a question? Peace, this is Rich. Yes, Rich. When I consider world history, it seems like um, the predominant event is just one terrible war after another. And it seems like there would be so much bad karma that maybe we could never collectively see our way out of it or through it. Mm -hmm. That is a belief. As you think about that belief, there's so much bad karma that maybe we could never work ourselves through it. That's just an idea. And you could easily say, hmm, there's so much bad karma, perhaps that is why there's so much happening today, so that it all comes down together, so we do pop through this. So it comes down to, can you in your mind, each of you, choose a way to navigate 
and create a harmonious resolution and solution without being delusional. And sometimes you just have to picture it in your mind. Picturing it in your mind, saying it will work out and feeling it sends out the message that it will work out. But you see, as we move into this territory, there's such a fine line between insanity and genius and illusion and delusion. Because many a person has caught, got caught up in a dream and held on to it and just sucked it and all it was was uh, their own madness, their own, let's say, getting trapped in that Neptunian vision illusion, forgetting to take out the trash, or to feed the kids, or walk the dog. Do you follow? There is a purpose to your humanity, and that is to enjoy the exuberance of it, to enjoy what it is to be human, to love, to have sex, to enjoy the food that sustain your body, to look at the weather patterns, to chat with each other, to travel, to see this magnificent world that is your own creation. And yet the times call for a cosmic connection. One could say that this is what's the key, the doorway that is leading to what the Mayans foresaw this recognition that it is humanity's destiny at this point to open to the cosmic mind. As you learned this earlier today, the Mayans, some of them had cosmic perspective, yes. They could track the, let's say, energies of the galaxy and make cycles. Maya is a star in the Pleiadian star system. But please remember that just because they had cosmic knowledge, they didn't have common sense in terms of valuing life and humanity. And you create so much karma when you do kill. When you think the game is about destroying someone else to get what you want, that is probably, on the physical level, the biggest entrapment of the game. A good heart good-hearted, generous, poor person, barefoot, not having much, but always having this exemplification of energy. Um, that is a soul that is moving along. Remember, as you have simultaneous selves, you have simultaneous wars in linear terms, Rich. But there's always healings. Not everything gets stuck. If it did, you wouldn't be even thinking in these terms. Do you follow? No one's following you home. Or you might pass a traffic camera or two. But uh, you have freedom to move around. Can you remember times when you had to, like a cat, sleep through the night? Wrapping rags or blankets around your feet so that you made no noise? Going down dark alleys, meeting in caves? meeting in basements, on hilltops, under groves of trees. In certain regard, you are like gods the way you parade around your world, with the mobility that you have, do you understand? Even though you're living in super surveillance times. But no one is going to come persecute you for your thinking. And so, People used to take risks just to think. Today people are out there everywhere and they've forgotten how to think. It's not something to value anymore. This is part of what's being put in the pot, in the stew. As people are going to wake up and say, is this worth it? Expect major turnarounds in the herd of humanity. Expect them to make some gigantic, some over the cliff, some turning, some twists and amazing surprises within the mass consciousness. Some will be originated, some will be part of mass mind, 
Some will be, not all, but some will be generated through behind the scenes electronic um, mind control frequencies that can alter people's behavior. Questions, please. Please, can you, this is Gail. Yes, Gail. Speak to the masculine energy that has been kind of domin dominating the past um, several thousand years versus feminine energy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in your timeline, in other words, in your time track, which is not the only time track, there are many pasts and there are many ways the past evolved to the present and it is not all war. Do you understand this? In the multiple reality of all probabilities, you think that history is a certain way. We agree with you. In your time track, it looks rather patriarchal. And that patriarchal society, really um, the goddess and the recognition of, of feminine power, the importance of it, uh, fell away long before Christianity, many thousands of years. And yet if you go back into some of the ancient cultures, uh, you go into the Mediterranean off of North Africa, in the location of some of these places, you have the great temples of Malta and the Mother Goddess. Uh, you have goddess energy recognized more predominantly in the further eastern regions, and way back in time, Eastern Europe, particularly uh, the Baltic region, uh, long presence of this mother goddess. The country that you now call uh, Turkey, Asia Minor, its ancient name Anatolia, home of mother goddess. So in terms of history, there have been predominations. Female is seen to embody, male is seen to embody. Where do these stories come from? Some of them are personifications of what you call the gods. You have Isis and Hathor from Egypt. Uh, you have uh, Set, the troublesome brother of Osiris. Uh, Osiris, Isis, and Horus are, let's say, a cut and paste of, uh, of Jesus, uh, Mary, and Joseph. Uh, and you can take the Egyptian pantheon and transfer it to the Sumerian pantheon where you have visiting extraterrestrials uh, I probably playing with genetic uh, uh, engineering and uh, the mother of humanity. And just because someone was the mother of humanity didn't mean that once they had the recognition and the power that they used it wisely. So what you have seen come down in the time track is this shifting of honoring the female exclusively, seeing her as the source of energy, then moving to the male to manage it. And on a symbolic turn, it is as if the various splits of the mind had to war with each other as to who would dominate the thinking patterns. Do you follow this? Mm -hmm. Now, many have proposed that the unfolding Aquarian age which will be an age of about 2200 years, as all ages are, in the Great Procession. That this foretells a greater sense of humanitarianism, of balance. Uh, some take it to the extreme and say there will be uh, uh, no gender, so to speak. Well, let's just say you're not going to enjoy life so much if no one has a gender. Part of what makes this place hot, enticing, and exciting. You name it, what is it? Sex. Sex, that's it. You are biologically, your beings, not you, you are a spirit in a biological being that you sort of morphed from your genetic line. Your spirit animates that body, but each body must keep itself going to keep the library going, and it is sex that brings you the greatest delights and some of the biggest problems, sometimes bigger than wars. Because you see, people die in war, they go home from war. You're married to someone, there you are. Sex, and then the result of your sex, children, and then their children. If you live long enough, you start to see the conditioning, the programming, the effects. These are, these are the ingredients in the karmic soup, the wounds 
the wounds of decisions of pain. War is one thing and it is indicative of an unevolved population. It is not a criticism of human race. We understand that you are, let's say, generous, to say the least, in your vitality and your capacity to love. But in the material body, in the physical body, at this plane of development, there is a maturation that the spirit learns how to manifest in the body without creating gross violations. Let's say that all people are here to learn to be sacred, not to worship something, but to recognize the sacredness of all things, the, the awe of being alive. It's not that, that you are a computer game and you can just pop out and get another body again. It's a good thing you are not. That's why it takes time to grow up a body, so that you get attached to it. Mm. So that you can develop a rapport with it and then so you can learn the lessons in it. And we assure you to the highest degree that yes, these are very challenging times that you are coming into as a planet. And as students of metaphysics and spirituality, wherever you extend your field of awareness, you are, you are a part of a huge cosmic drama. We encourage you to play your part as if you are going to get a Golden Globe and five academies. And you do that by being who you are. Saying, yeah, I'm Steve. I'm Gail. I'm Zuma. Do you understand? Because you are the manifestation of your own desires and your own expression. Enjoy it and then amplify it and set no limits to yourself be grounded and practical at the same time. You with us? Yes. We thought there would be a big cheer and we yes. would get a hippie yes. hooray or something. <laughs> we were giving you a campaign speech there. All right. Questions, please. We are teasing you. Good. Who is well, it? I was just going to add to what Rich said um, or asked and that it seems to me that one of the things about war along so many timelines is, is that war or pain and loss and suffering or disappointment in relationships and between the genders too, all that tends to seem to create trauma. Trauma creates amnesia. And so this is one of the things that we're working with, it seems like today almost, is, is like shaking up, up the, shaking off shaking the amnesia, up, yes. the thing that says, oh, you're just stuck in this time. And you see, in this place. And, and these you did seven little papers all about and just so, so others know what you were doing at one point our vehicle gave everyone a paper and said write a date and then on the other side what write an occupation or something and another paper said write a time and write a country and put your initials here and then three more papers there and two more papers there and put this down there. After a while you wouldn't know which side of the paper you were writing on and how many you wrote on yes and which you initialed and which you didn't and put a number here and write a word and write three letters and it became so complex which was exactly perfect. And yet, then you threw them all in the pot and then everyone sort of fished in for them and, and you came up with um, clues. Not like dream seeds that we used to do, write a little message, kumbaya, <laughs> love and light. Now there are stories that even you, through two or three words, because you are looking for it, because that's the nature of the game, one word grows country, a date, can start to resonate with the chakras as well. You see the chakras are these doorways of energy into the body. And as you relax and make room for this, then picture that you are an energy being and a physical being, and more, this is working multidimensionally on many layers. And you can close your eyes and picture things or have your eyes open and, and experience things, yet in the end, at the end of the day, your primary focus is going to be to brush your teeth, go to the loo, wash up and get into bed. Do you follow? Yeah. There's that ordinary human body. And let's say this, if any of you 
feel that you have been engaged as a warrior. This was a good thing that Rich brought up. War, so much war. You've seen it. If you have not been a warrior, we doubt that, but you've all, everyone experiences all things. You follow? Picture yourself there. Or if you listen to a current war story or hear a vet talk or something, you can use that war energy to spring off and to put yourself back in the position of war. And to, in your mind, because in your mind it's the flexibility of dreaming. And you learn in dreaming, there's no dire consequences. Dreaming is very forgiving. In other words, if you fall off the cliff dreaming, so what, you wake up, yes? Right. So a dreaming you can do if you are a warrior yourself. You can simply say, I'm walking away. Now, that would be the height of desertion and it would be create all kinds of battle confusion and all things. But if in your mind you can create what you want, you can create any ending that you want. And so in your mind you say, if I have been a part of war, I've learned that it is really not such a good thing at all. And there, the real power to get what I want is to honestly work for it and to use my imagination to draw to myself the power of my own abracadabra, that as I speak, so it shall be. And then in your mind, you see the warrior walking away. And the warrior can be so gracious as to imagine others walking away with him. This begins not to create necessarily a parallel self just walks away and has no problem. It plants a seed in the other line of time that from someplace else a greater understanding is being transmitted. And as you raise your consciousness, you transmit your greater understanding along these lines of time. And some of them will show up in your reality. What we are working with you today is that we are fishing. We are fishing the sea of time, the seas of time. Seeing what can be pulled out and how you respond to it. Questions? Peace, this is Rich. Yes, Rich. <clears throat> My question involves the value of reading our holy scripture in our culture, which would be the Bible. The value of reading the Bible. And let me just say, you know, after reading your books, uh, it becomes more challenging in the sense that I have no sense of certainty anymore who the good guys were, or who the bad guys were, or what might be true or, or what might be false. And so I was just wondering if you could comment on, uh, on the Bible and its usefulness as a, as a study guide. All right. <clears throat> the Bible, in certain terms, is um, a compilation of stories that in modern times have been extraordinarily edited. It is called the good book, meaning that in some way these parables, these historical, quote, realities that have been embedded convey the presence of powerful beings on your planet, not just one God. What you have experienced at this point in your life is a new way of looking at the old good book. Do you follow? People can read the Bible and believe it. And every person who reads the Bible sees something else in it. Just as people who read our books, not to compare our bull to that bull, but uh, we are from the bull. Yeah. And if you got that little twist of turn there, mystery landers are laughing. But even in our own books, people have said, Every time I read it, I see it in a different light. The Bible can be read in the same way. As a true believer, uh, whatever you believe in, if you are the Judaic faith or, or Islam or Christian or any of the branches of Christian, Protestant, Catholic, each one is going to see something different. Once you get exposed to a cosmic perspective, let us say, and you read things about opening your mind and multidimensional and cosmic visitors, the Bible can be even more interesting because you begin to see 
that, oh, I thought it meant this, but now based on what I know, maybe it means this. So in some terms it is a book of magic that has many layers of stories. And we are not just talking codes and things of this nature, and they are them. We are speaking more in terms of the levels at which it can be read. It can be read as a primer, like a first or second grade book. Just one word next to another word. But the more you read about it in terms of events, descriptions of events, the more it will unfold. Are you drawn to the biblical areas on the timeline chart? Uh, I am. That would be f the beginning to about uh, 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 100 AD. That is the Old Testament. Right. Now, here it looks as if it is about, what, 4,000, 4,000 and a half years, yes? Right. Rich in some terms, the Bible is the story of Atlantis. How does that feel in your body? It's a very interesting idea. Remember, our vehicle said, you announce this at one end of the room, and by the time it passes down through time, it sounds like something completely different, yes? Right. And, and, there is the ability or the shift in the human mind to be in a different reality and have a different interpretation of things. For example, years ago, stars were stars. Today, when you talk about stars, you could be talking about someone from Hollywood. Do you understand? <laughs> so, there is, there are layers of truth in the Bible, many, and the other thing to remember about the Bible as your mind becomes more curious are all the books that did not qualify to be in the Bible that are called the Apocrypha, the Pseudopigrapha, uh, the books of Enoch and these are all considered to be legitimate stories of what you call prehistory and yet they were void from the official version of the Bible and this you must ask why in the same way people apply for Freedom of Information Act today. Why do you hold things out from the public and just give us so much? Why were those books not put in for the masses to see? Why? Because they contradict realities to such an extreme. And they talk about uh, things that are, let's say, do not fit in the little container of reality that humanity um, collectively chose to explore. We would say, read it with new eyes if you are so inclined. Or perhaps you might want to read someone's analysis of the Bible that sees it in another light. And that might give you a real charge. You follow? Yes. Oh, there's some good author out there. Ask our vehicle, she'll tell you. That fellow from Australia takes all the biblical stuff and does some good things with it. What's his name there, George? Do you recall? Oh, we've got several of his books here. What's his name? Well, anyways, show it to Rich afterwards. That'll, yeah. that'll uh -huh. give him a wowie wow wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what you need, is to realize that everyone sees things in a different light. Questions, please. I have a question. You must whisper louder. Use your cheerleader voice, please. This is, this is Zumra speaking. Good. <laughs> I have a question about the meditation. Um, what meditation? There have been a lot of sayings that meditation is good for you. And I'm the person who cannot pray and cannot do meditations. I fall asleep. And I'm wondering, is there a lot of people like me who fall asleep in yes. meditation? Yes. And and, meditate? Now here's the thing. You have the picture of the garden of the mind, yes? Yeah. So what you do is, in meditation, you want to be able to hang out, to, to leave the pee secure, and to go slower and slower into that bridge carrot area, the lower cycles, uh, so 12 to about 8. And then you want to move down a little slower in 8 to 4. What you do, Zuma, is you zoom. <laughs> yeah. You go from 13 to 30 down to lower than floor. 
and you have not learned how to fly or to keep your mind in that intermediate zone. This is no default in your being. It is simply uh, if you were looking out the window and you saw children roller skating by and you looked down on your feet and you said, oh, those lucky children, they were born with those metal things on their feet. Look at me. I'll never be a roller skater. It would be such a limited perspective because they weren't born with those rollers. They had to put them on and learn how to skate. So you have to learn how to hover rather than to crash. You follow? Yeah. Do you, are you tired? Do you get enough rest? Maybe not. Or do you have children? Three. All right, then you can't get enough rest. <clears throat> so here's the thing. For you, you need more moving meditation. Spinning would be very good for you. Just, just not so much, but what happens is it changes your brainwave frequencies and it will not put you to sleep. You follow? Yes. And you will get just as much out of it. It seems to us that you have full plate, full life, uh, that you have a grace about you, but you run a little fast because you have to have so much to take care of. So that when someone says, okay, meditate, the body goes, meditate, <sighs> crash. So you do not get enough rest. See if it will lighten up if you give, do not be one of those waitress mothers to your children. Always make sure that you assign them duties so that everyone grows up understanding that they are an adult and functional. Don't over fuss over them and do things for them. Unless they are very, very, very little. But once they start getting five, seven, they must learn to do for themselves. And you will get more rest. But that is part of your deprivation. So spinning is good for you because it changes brain waves. Um, let's say for you, um, maybe sometime the children like to color. Do you have coloring books for children? My children are 18, 14. Oh, they are big and children. Two years old, yeah. How old? And two. 18, 14, and two. Two, yeah. All right. So the two, let's say, when the two gets ready to color, You would do well to get yourself a book of mandalas and some nice whatevers to color in those mandalas. Do you follow what we are saying? Yes. This way you cannot fall asleep and yet you will be doing a working meditation, like the spinning is a working meditation. Once you begin to allow your mind to be in those realms and not go down to sleep, you will start to pick things up and get information. And these two things in and of themselves would be very good. If you were an artiste, we would say to draw your own mandalas. If you are a gardener, we would say to really get out there and make a mandala garden or, or make some small shape where it is all symmetrical and beauty. That can be working meditation. Do you see how important that can be? Not only, it's not the only way to sit and close and hum. Good. Who has a question? Please, this is Joy. Yes, Joy. I've, I've been thinking a lot today about um, war and, and sacrifice and the beginning of the conversation we had about the Mayas and their sacrifices and what they did with, with, uh, with that kind of thing. And um, I'm wondering if that mentality, which also existed in Egypt and seemed to have moved into the Egyptian interpretations in Bible stories and in the Quran and all of that, all into the major religions, sacrifice became, seems to have become a noble thing. And so now when men are going to war, they're doing the noble thing. Um, it's, it, it seems to me like humanity in general has been duped. Has been duped, yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, they've been duped. And let's say, where did you learn about sacrifice from? Well, let's say you can't point the finger at the CEO or this president or whatever. There is a co-creation. And this is what your biblical stories do teach you. 
that you have Adam and Eve um, listening to voices in the sky and talking snake and uh, eating an apple and discovering that they could have hot sex and, and having to produce children, etc. And then their children create fratricide. Uh, this is quite a cosmic drama, yes? yes? That has come down. And from all of this, there are lessons. And the lessons had to do with, uh, uh, let's say, someone orchestrating a sort of managing of Earth. The problem that people forget is that if you, you tend to think that perhaps the Adam and Eve story, the God story, the Mesopotamian story, that they are the timeline. But people who were in South Africa and Middle Africa, they were in India, they were in Australia, they were sometimes at the poles, they were in America at these times in South America. And poignant stories happened there, but there were no buildings per se. Do you follow? And visitors are the ones who came to your planet to manage your planet and to create laws. Did Moses not go up to the mountain to get the laws? And the laws, there can be many laws. The laws could say you have blessed beings and you all, whatever. There's, there's many ways that the reality can be decreed to you. But sacrifice, as it was taught to you, was a duty of the humans to the gods. Sacrifice had many facets to it. Some ancient sacrifice, um, some researchers and scholars point out that sacrifice was commanded by the gods as a way of procuring food. Long, long time ago, the gods, visiting gods, as it was recorded in some of these uh, apocryphal books, would command their people to spice the sacrifice. Well, you know what this means. Huh. It's putting salt and pepper on the barbecue. Sacrifice is like star. It has many meanings. At one time, the people were taught that in order to call energies from other dimensions, if they took something alive, particularly young and virgin, and sliced it open, and called the gods, the blood would bring them. Because the blood is life force, and it is like a aroma, let us say, that sometimes moves through the dimensions to attract non-physicals. So now today, you have millions of men all over the world, willingly women too, marching to war in sacrifice as honor for their country. But the people in the Aztec world, in the Inca world, even the Maya world, all over, many of them went nobly to sacrifice. Many of them were hypnotized and drugged as well, the majority. There is a common denominator within the human body that has self-preservation and self-honor. And sometimes in order to get people to willingly sacrifice themselves, there was great battles and struggles because that spirit knows that is not in its higher favor. Sometimes demons would come to occupy a person so that they would appear to approach the death and the demon would leave just before and the person would panic. There's so many versions of the world. We want to emphasize that, again, the times that you are entering are new beginnings. We've asked you to think back to about 12 years ago or some such, about, what, 1998, 99, is that the time period, George? 19, oh, 12 years ago? Yes. 98, yes. 98, 99. And to see what you began in life at that phase. What new beginning did you start? 
where were you taking yourself? What were you initiating? And then you might look six years ago to see how did you have to balance that? What balance were you working on? Now you are in a triple, quadruple, tenth degree whammy of starting a new cycle. And there's always opportunity if you know how to picture and condition the space for what you want. Questions, please. First, how much time do we have, George? A few minutes? About 18 minutes. 18 minutes, all right. <clears throat> Questions, please. I have a question. This is Zuma. Yes. Um, so where we're heading, what, what to expect next, next decade, at least? That's too general of a question, please. It is a thousand answers. Where are you heading? Did you hear us say that each person will have a variety of experiences and yet a, you are looking at systemic collapse? Well, I'm thinking as a humanity, as, do we need to expect all this, you know, um, global physical changes, like geographical changes on the earth? Some of them will happen, yes. Some of them, there may be geographical necessarily rearranging the geography but certainly you are entering a time of potentials for uh, severe weather and heightened activity in terms of volcanic in terms of uh, earthquake and in terms of strange phenomena in the sky that affect your world now in listening to you, Zuma you sort of have this do we have to be afraid or can we be okay or or breathe and relax because all kinds of things are going to happen and it's not going to be the let's say smooth birds twittering in the sunset day after day for the next 50 years these are tumultuous times recognize it how tumultuous they will become will depend upon people's response as we said what mood they're in when they wake up when this energy wakes them up. And many of them may be angry, but many of them may feel the spirit inside of them to innovate, to realize, to recognize that you are in collapse, to rebuild. When we say collapse, it, we're not talking about systemic destruction with everything going up in smoke and nuclear bombs, etc. We are saying that the things that you rely on, that have been so there for you, may not be. There's huge deficits, there's no money, there is a malaise among people, the, what you produce has become minimized, everything's typing it in the mind but there's nothing to show for it. So where this will lead will depend upon the area in which you live and your own beliefs, which we certainly advise you to banish any fears that you have about the future and just to valiantly meet it with common sense and great expectations. We know that sounds like a bit of a conundrum, yes? Krista, what are you thinking? Um, about uh, karma and that many of us are now becoming aware of other lives we have Yes. how that might help us to deal with the tumult or the new awakening. All right, can you just throw out a life at us that you know you have? Um, life in India. Um, Doing? Um, I was, uh, in my older life I lived with my son who's now my mother. <laughs> and um, so I, I just have some memories about being in like a market, a dusty market, and lots of noise. and. Um, Goats? Probably. Donkeys. <laughs> Not assuredly though, yes. Well, goats, yes. So what is your question? Just becoming, starting to become aware of more about earlier lives and that is a way to help certainly resolve some karma but also prepare for um, a good outcome with the new awakening by like combining all of those lives into one so we have that wealth of knowledge or abilities. 
Let's say that there's a knowing that happens inside and that knowing grows when you are able to say, well, I, I know I had a, a life, a number of lives in the American Plains as an Indian. I know I've been a trapper. I know I've visited the Arctic. I know I've lived in cold stone burns and been the mother or the father of many, always out there at first dawn milking the cows, feeding the cows. That's very common timeline for many people, you know. The crack of the whip in the air to get the horses moving. The cluster of wheels. You may wonder what, what, is, what is the point of just recognizing and resonizing with these. When you recognize just a flicker of it, it has a effect of re-stimulating the neural networks in the body. Steve asked us a class or two ago, big discussion about more of the mind being utilized. The, that the humans use such a small part of their brain capacity and that more was becoming activated. And yes, there are things that you can do yourselves to, to get a more active mind. But still one has to wonder that even with some of the great proliferation of genius in the world, no one has come close to 50% activation, have they? At least as it is understood. It is said that uh, even the best approach 10% of the computing power of the brain. That says to us either you have bad water, <clears throat> in other words you're all drinking the same bad water, or there's a switch that hasn't been turned on. Do you follow? And we are suggesting that that switch is something that is time to the cosmos, that it allows at certain junctures a activation of the biology. Remember, you are not your biology. You occupy your biology. You animate this biology. And when, this, when you die, you will take your consciousness with you. This biology, unless it is shipped into pharaonic times, or unless you go for the modern fertilization, oh, not fertilization, what do they use? Formaldehyde and all these things. It's even so. It, it's just a rubberized remembrance. Yet this body is designed to the cosmos. It is keyed by sun and light modulations. And so there are times when, as we gave you in the energy exercise, where the pyramid vibrated through the pharaonic direction of the energy, and it literally opened the minds of the people into greater capacity, not into perpetuity. Ancient Egyptians and other beings, and certainly it's not um, local just to Egypt, but again, Egypt is convenient because of the, the historical record that has been left. But this would be a service, a communion, so to speak, that has happened uh, uh, through collectives and individuals time again, where another being or being acts as a intermediary to take the cosmic energy and open activate the mind of another, sometimes for an instant. It is only great, great, great initiates that can take that much energy in for any extended periods of time. Even great initiates on your world throughout history had to rest. They had to block things off in the file cabinets and put them away because, after all, you are human. And your humanity is always going to call. And to deny your humanity and to attempt to get into the cosmos is foolish. You are already in the cosmos. 
and something you have to look forward to is that that you will have bouts not necessarily great planes extending forever but peekaboos and bouts of cosmic wedges opening your mind uh, more uh, what you call transcendental ecstatic moments and experiences and again they will not happen watching TV or sorting out someone's nonsense on the internet they happen around a campfire they happen when you allow yourself to reach out into nature to feel and nature feels you reaching back Questions, comments? Is this is Gail? Yes, Gail. In terms of um, enlightenment or lack of over the period of time that the Earth has existed, are we doing more damage now to the Earth because of our limited understanding of why we're here or? What is our role as caretakers of this planet? Let's say this. There is a tremendous amount of guilt that is being laid on people today that you have mocked up the planet. <clears throat> Do you understand this? Yes. And people feel this on a desolation soul level. There's no hope. We've ruined this place. We've screwed it up. Well, there's so many of you. That's the conundrum. And there are so many who have no spiritual awareness. They all worship a god here and there and play their part one day a week or some such. But there is no knowing connectedness to the field. People go, today they don't even pluck their own food, so they don't even know where it comes from. And yet, in order for this breakout in consciousness, this shuffling off of the amnesia, this everything that's occurring on your planet, the cosmic consciousness, everything that is happening required all of the participants. You could not get to this spiritual momentum to break out without this number of people. In some way, there is a noble sacrifice listen to that word, that each person has agreed to take on for the greater whole, knowing that to call in a time where millions could come and there would be jobs and roofs and foods, billions, would be at great risk to the planet if the people were not spiritually aware. And yet without calling the great legions and allowing them to come in and over a few 200 years, 300 years, to build the systems that would accommodate them, the medicines that kept them alive, the education that somehow gave them a job, a purpose, a being, the building, this conglomeration of forces, seven billion plus on the physical level, was, let's say, creates a momentum. And that momentum is augmented with your technology so that it feels as if there are 50 billion of you. Do you follow this? Yes. And it is this momentum of energy that is going to crack something that has held humanity entrapped for a good long time, in terms of time. One could say that the experiment in consciousness of being precise yet ignorant of the larger picture has reached an end. Yet all these people were needed to help it get there faster, to move faster to great, greater progress. In larger terms, all souls know, not all, they learn eventually, some takes a long time, that the death process is an ending and you can come back again and live again in terms of linear time. In terms of simultaneous time, one can see that one is playing here, there, and everywhere. There's no ending in those terms. Yet there are the consequences of living that go beyond the apparent death. Do not feel guilty. Allow the earth her generosity to deal 
with humanity's necessary necessity to be here now. In your own life, we would say, make a beautiful garden. Grow the best carrots in the neighborhood, or the best peas, or have the most delicious watermelon. Find something that you specialize in and add your vibrant beauty to nature and thank nature for her mysteries in working with you. Because there's so much focus on what can't be done and how it is all falling apart. It's every day the sun rises whether the clouds are there or not. And you can do some kind act, some kind generosity into the field. Perhaps some lunch hour you may say, I'm going to go sit on the park bench for 15 minutes and just let the trees know how beautiful they are. Some people think, what does that do? But we who understand frequency know what that does. You are giving love to the earth. And the more love you give, that's your world. Give everyone the grace to create their own and know that you will see tumultuous destruction. But the earth is not going to be destroyed, just transformed in some places. Other places beautified, reappreciated, reinvigorated. Some of the things you have to look forward to, not immediately, but will unfold over the next seven or eight years, is a new way of invigorating earth, a new way of using energy, uh, operating with subtle energies, the power of the mind and once people are today people have to be convinced they have power they argue for their limitation they argue for what they do not have but once things quicken there will be no argumentation and they will people will fly with this faster and faster and you will be in envy of some who are much younger than you and you will say we had the yoke on and we plowed the field and look at you kids we showed you the way and now you are launching yourselves to the moon that is their generation's karma and their wit. Do you understand? Yes. You are living yours. and the One is not to be applauded over the other. They are each to be esteemed. But you will see quickenings. And you will see, let's say, new era of approaching things. We are not talking about what your president toots all the time about green energy and jobs and he's a broken record. We are talking about individuals lighting up others recognizing they are lighting up and ideas seeming to come to the mind out of nowhere. A, a, a new infusion of information of spirit. And the more person is clear and grounded and good of heart, these will be the recipients. And in terms of what people call star seed, those who, let's say, have stellar consciousness, and recognition of either simultaneous lives in the cosmos you know this time chart down here is just about earth yes mm -hmm. but in timelines each of you have cosmic journeys that you are on and just as we have said we are a collective of energy beings who come from the Pleiades some of us live in different lines of time thank you we live in different lines of time. We meet in a form of energy, in your terms, far into the future, to visit you far into our past. And when we first told the story, our vehicle said, oh goodness, this is pretty far out. And yet, if over the years you've all learned that there are so many Pleiadian footprints around the planet so many cultures have their own stories, myths, legends, truths about the ancestors from the Pleiades. Who these ancestors are, are, let's say, not so important at this moment. You will find all these things out in good time, in good measure. But in order to find them out, you must activate who you are and what you are. Because you see, one of the things that you and many others on the planet are learning, it is easy to feed you information. And you have been shut down in terms of psychic energy. You have been shut down in terms of multidimensional necessity or awareness. And 
you have lost a certain sense of scrutiny. So for many people, they believe what they are told, especially if it sounds too good to be true. So you must. It is imperative that you have a greater sense of inner radar and you can rely on parts of yourself along the lines of time who were not so finely tuned uh, with education and technology. They were free roamers. And this is some of the assistance that you can call to yourself that's wanting to help you uh, activate this part of the mind. Are you with us, everyone? Yes. yes. Good. Now, we are going to come to a close in just a few minutes. But we would like to advise you, we would like to say, throw it all into the pot and fish out seven more, all right? Yes. And see how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. Because you, you might think, oh, this is going to be, I lost this thread of the story and this is important, maybe I should write it all back down before I throw it into the pot kind of thing, yes? Throw it into the pot and play. Act as if that there's no losing, there's only learning. And that the learning can be magnanimous, beneficial, and a lot of fun. We want you to recognize in the heart of all things that are happening on the planet that the energy you might call God, goddess, a uh, field of existence, this is an energy that supports the growth of consciousness. It senses it. And so know that about yourself, that the natural force of existence, not just guides or ancestors, but existence in itself works to support your unfoldment. See if you can banish doubt and worry, pull yourselves away from your electronic addictions and manage them, have less. Be free, let the mind explore, laugh, dance, create, because these are these are times that you have long, long been waiting for, and we want you to enjoy them to the highest of your capabilities. All right? So, with that said, dear friends, it has been a great pleasure, and we bid you to stretch your psychic awareness, and in so doing, the keys to multidimensional experiences and values will become more apparent and will certainly offer an enrichment of all of your lives. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.